Now on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lambs were being slaughtered, his disciples said to him, Where would you like us to go and prepare for your Passover supper? So he sent out two of his disciples with these instructions. Go to the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him, and when he enters the house, give this message to the householder. The master says, where is the room reserved for me to eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs set out in readiness. Make the preparations for us there. Then the disciples went off. And when they came into the city, they found everything just as he had told them. So they prepared the Passover. In the evening, he came to the house with the twelve. As they sat at supper, Jesus said, I tell you this, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. At this they were dismayed, and one by one they said to him, Is it I?
those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Since that day when I repented and followed him, I have studied our scriptures closely and am now convinced that Jesus is the fulfillment of every prophecy about the coming Messiah, God's anointed. Someday, I hope to write a paper from his many teachings and record the heart of his sermon about the good news of the kingdom of God. The sermon he first delivered on that mountain in Galilee three years ago. It is a new gospel. Good news for you and for me, for all of us, everyone, all over the world.
James, brother of John. I followed Jesus with my brother after he called us while we're mending our nets by the Sea of Galilee with our father Zebedee one day almost three years ago. We were honored when Jesus wanted us as his disciples and were humbled when he chose both of us to be among the twelve apostles. Our mother, Salome, was quite ambitious of our behalf and urged us to press our claims upon Jesus. In route to Jerusalem last week, we made this request of him. The teacher grant us to sit one at your right and the other at your left. When you come into your kingdom. He replied, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? Or to be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? He said, Lord, we are able. Then he told us we would surely bring his cup and be baptized with his baptism. But it was not within his power to grant the right and privilege of sitting at his right and left hand in his kingdom. The others were angry when they heard of our request. Jesus then reminded us that he who would be first must be the servant of all. And he demonstrated his word by washing our feet just before supper. And now he who taught us the way of love is to be betrayed by one of those whom he loved. Who can it be? Why should one of us do such a thing? I keep thinking deep down inside my own heart. Is it I? Is it I? Mary washed his feet with that expensive ointment and perfume, 
still think it's a waste of money. And if I conspire with the high priests and I have 30 pieces of silver on my person, that's my affair. See, I believe in Jesus. I really believe in Jesus, but somebody has to make him assert himself as God's Messiah. And he refuses to make a move. Well, I've made one. And he hints that he knows what I've done. He said so a few moments ago when he watched my feet. But I have my reasons. Now what would you do? What would you do if, if you were in my place? Should I just ignore his remarks? Or should I just be like all the others here, and piously and self-righteously ask myself, is it I? Is it I?
and he commissioned us to go forth and preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told us to be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves since he was sending us out as sheep on this wall. It is enough, he said, that the disciple be like his teacher and the slave as his master. I was in Jerusalem when he issued the great invitation. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my burden is easy, and my yoke is light. And now, now he who came to share men's burdens has a burden of trust upon him. The knowledge that one of us will betray him. Who can the traitor be? Is it the one we least suspect? Or will all of us betray him before the night is over? Peter, Judas, John, James, and Thaddeus? Is it I? Is it I? My name is Thomas the Twin, or Thomas Nicholas, which means twin. While I do not go through life full of bloom and despondency, I do require proof before I commit to something. I must see before I believe. Yet, I'm not a man full of doubt, but rather, I sometimes feel that I'm a man full of daring. For example, I remember the day that Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus that their brother Lazarus had just died. Jesus said, we must go to him. Now many of these same disciples knew the growing opposition to Jesus, and yet they refused to go with him to Bethany. They shrank before unseen fear. Well, that's when I stood up and I rebuked him and said, let us go with him that we also might die with him. Why is it that they always remember my doubts and forget about my daring? How is it that they always remember my questions and forget about my affirmations? Why in the world do they always remember my fears and forget about my faith? I used to go fishing with some of these men. And oh, how well I recall the day Jesus spoke to the attitudes on the horns of Satan during the first year of his public ministry. I can almost see him now. Rebuking the winds over stormy Galilee. Healing the sick. Curing the diseased. Opening the eyes of the blind. Unstopping the ears of the dead. Even cleansing the skin of the lepers. And always, always preaching the gospel to the poor. And yet, opposition has arisen and his enemies are determined to kill him. They would have Jesus be their servant. Whereas, all he asks of each of us is that we be God's servant. Now he tells us that even among his chosen twelve, there is a traitor. Is he speaking to me? Is he referring to me? Lord, is it I?
John and my brother Jamie. We were in a boat nearby with our fathers every day, mending our nets. When Jesus called us, we immediately left the boat and our father and followed him. Since that time, I have tried to understand Jesus by loving him. Sometimes I think he is as much of God as will ever possess a human form. Yet I love him as a person, and he returns that love. Sometimes he calls me beloved disciple. I have shared his trials. I have experienced his hours of trial. I was there <coughs> on the Mount of Transfiguration, and I beheld his glory. <laughs> it was to me that he told him his talk with Nicodemus when he spoke those wonderful words. For God has <coughs> so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Peter and I completed the arrangements for the celebration of the Passover here in this room tonight. Some, someday I want to write down some of his deeds and some of his wonderful sayings so that others may read and in reading believe that Jesus is Son of God. And in believing, they have life in His name. Yet now, He has just said that one of us will betray Him. I, I cannot believe it. Yet it must be so, <coughs> else He would not have said it. Yes. Yeah. 
Matthew the publican? Was it the big fisherman or his brother? Or, or does Jesus think that it is I because I am the only zealot amongst us? It is it I? As they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God.
bread is broken and the wine is poured. And once more grim Golgotha's hill is nigh. By whom is Christ again denied, betrayed? Or should we all cry out, Lord, is it I? A traitor kisses him upon the cheek. A fisherman unsheaths his sword nearby. Did all this take place 2,000 years ago? Or should we all cry out, Lord, is it I? The crown of thorns is pressed upon his brow, and bearing his cross, he goes to die. Who is this, this guilty, and who is the shame? Or should we all cry out, Lord, is it I?